So I'm looking forward to that. Who are you playing with? Ayo. Wow. Okay, so we'll make sure to book our flight for Sunday night. Uh, no. I want to fly out like on Monday because because as a late birthday present for you, I know how badly you want to go to the Taylor Swift Eras tour. It's on Sunday in Denver. Happy birthday! Um, okay, I'm gonna edit that out, guys. Um... Okay, we have another episode of the James Ignatowicz Show. We have Anna Bright on the podcast once again. I think this is probably number five or six of her of her guest appearances, and uh, it just gets better every time. So we've got her back on the podcast. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me on, James. Always a pleasure. You're welcome. So we have... A lot to talk about. We have Major League Pickleball to talk about. Um, I've probably got a little more to talk about than Anna does, given that I played twice as many matches. Um, but we're going to get into it, everybody. First, we're going to talk about Anna's experience getting to um, third place in her group uh, with the Hustlers, finishing with a one and two record. Um, but I'm sure having a lot of fun. It's a fun team. You got Tyson, Rafa, Lacey on the team. Tell us about that weekend. Yeah, obviously our worst performance as a team, but still a lot of fun. I felt like our group was really tough. Uh, I knew advancing was going to be difficult. It's kind of unfortunate that by the time we played the Mashers, they were completely revamped with uh, with Matt Wright instead of DJ, which I feel like just really changed the whole team. Uh, and then, you know, hard eight's always tough. Rafa and I didn't do well in mix, but we felt like that was a change worth trying. And yeah, then the smashes barely edged us. They had a huge win against the hard eights. I was really happy for them, especially like Vivian and Kyle beating the Newmans to, to win three, one and clinch that playoff spot. If they won three, two, they wouldn't have made the playoffs. I think so. I was happy for them all around. It was, it was fun. Yeah. I did yeah, a lot it's of tough. <laughs> playing but, mixed with Rafa. How how was that experience? Honestly, all the blame's on me, right? Like the guy doesn't lose at MLP, so <laughs> that's clearly my fault. Um, just couldn't make balls, didn't get big enough. Mm-hmm. Got to get um, big and, and mix as gotta, a woman. Got to get big and mixed as a female. So I got some work to do. Mm-hmm. It's because you never let me play the left and mix. So then you know I just wasn't ready. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. I, I think we have to to switch it up a little, put you on the left, let you get big. I'll play the right and just get small. I don't need to get small. I'm already yeah, you don't need to already pretty small. You don't need to get small. Um, anyways, so this weekend for me was exciting. Played with the fives. So me, Annalie, Leia, Hayden. And it was it was a great weekend. I think it's it's tough because it's a little bittersweet having that be our last weekend. We haven't played um really quite as well as that weekend you know ever together and now it's over so Hayden played great I think he finished fourth overall in the player standings Hayden Patrick when that is um Anna Lee played great as always and Leia also played really well and we all kind of came together and and we almost won we made it through the group play we got all the way to the finals and we lost to Ben's team and that was just tough because we were up to one. I got to play the mixed match with Leia to clinch it. We ended up losing and then we lost in the dream dream breaker. And we were a huge favorite in that dream breaker. And we all kind of just, I don't think any of us played our best against uh, that team in the dream breaker, but it is what it is. You know, you can't win them all. Um, and I think that this next draft it's going to be tough because one thing I'm sure of is my team's not going to be that good or as good as the fives because i'm going to get drafted higher i'm probably going to get drafted towards the end of the first round and i'm not going to get to play with anna lee again on my team do you, and think, that's that, do you think that like can you see what i've changed my name to no it doesn't show up why doesn't it show up i can see it i'm sorry the, said, the listeners probably don't want to see it oh my gosh i changed my they name to Hayden first round pick <laughs> um do you think it's possible you could be on the same team with Leia or Hayden again? Do you think they could go like early, like 
I don't think it's going to be possible for me to be on the same team as Leia again. I think that's not going to happen just based on where we're going to get drafted probably, but Hayden, yes. And if I have a chance to take Hayden again, if he's in the fourth round, which he probably will be, I'm going to take him. I think. Why are you so confident you're a first round pick? I'm not. I don't don't think I should be. I just think the owners think I should be. And that's going to be a mistake on their part. So we'll see. But I don't know that you're doing a great job with this reverse psychology. You just go and you're like, yeah, I'm probably getting in the first round. Then I ask you, then you're like, well, I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be. So I don't want to be. I want to get drafted. I want to get drafted. And I think for the listeners at home who don't know this, Almost every first round pick or second round pick, since they know they're going to get drafted in premier anyway, they want to get drafted as low as they possibly can, because then your teammates are going to be better. So for me, I'm happy to get drafted in the second round, but I just think the owners are too smart for that. They're not going to let me slip to the second round. They're going to take me in the first round. They know what they're doing. So that's, Anna's not amused. Do you think you're going to get drafted above me? Who gets drafted first? I don't think the owners are that smart, but uh, <laughs> if, I don't know. I hope I hope to be drafted after you. We'll see. Yeah, me too. But what I do know is that this next MLP draft is going to get really messy because if you look at the first round picks from last year or from last season, Andrea Coop was taken first round. That's not going to happen again. In the future of all of our pickleball careers, Andrea Coop will never be taken in the first round again. Um, you ought to be careful saying that. Why? The Discord is Coopy Nation. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. You are dangerous. I'm sorry, Oda. But... No, I don't think Andrea is going to get taken first round. I don't think she thinks that. Um, she's still a good player. She's going to be in Premier, but first round is aggressive. Um so that's not going to happen. Jesse Irvin. Andrea. I don't think Jesse Irvin's going to be. I think there's about five players that were taken in the first round. Or you look back and you're like, okay, maybe not. And then there's going to be players that come in that are playing really well. Like Dylan Frazier was taken in the second round last season. Dylan's an obvious first round pick. He's playing so well. He's arguably. He that last place though. Well, who was their first round pick? Who was their second round pick? Who was their she first round pick? Carry- if Dylan, okay, you can swap it. So Wait, no, Dylan but the listeners Andrew, don't know at home who was their first round pick. Just for context. you just said, Andrea was their first round pick. Andrea was so their. You can first think round of pick. it as effectively if Dylan was the first round pick and Andrea was the second round pick. It's like that would have been valid. No, but I don't think she's going second round either. Federico was the second round pick. Andrea was the third round. Whatever, it's still. A, I don't a, think Andrea's a, going third round. Everyone, tune into my podcast. I'm going to grill Dylan about this. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think. Is Dylan an MLP player? Maybe not. He he might not be. A, he's an amazing PPA player. Maybe he's just a great MLP player and not an amazing MLP player. Who knows? Am I an MLP player? I don't know. We'll see. But let's just move forward a little to what really matters. And this is something that the listeners probably don't care about. Anna and I are going to Europe for 10 days, starting in four days. And this is going to be fun. We're going to go to England. We'll see about other places, maybe France, Italy, Spain. This is going to be electric. And um, we're not playing any pickleball, I don't think. We're going to just take eight or nine or ten days off of pickleball. We're going to eat a lot of croissants and other things. I don't know what we're going to do. What are, what are you? What are your expectations for this trip to Europe that the listeners don't care about at all? It's actually stressful, everyone, because our flight is today at 8 p.m. And it's currently 146. And we don't even have a, we just have flights. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know where we're going. We just know we're going to go to Wimbledon. Um, So I'm stressed out about, you know, what we're going to pack. But James is like, we've got to record this podcast. Please record this podcast. Please, please. So so here I am taking a break from stressing about what to pack. Um, well, it's because I was supposed to have Hayden on last night, and then he canceled because he was at a party. Yeah, sorry, everyone, you're listening to me instead of Hayden. I was I, I was actually excited for the episode with Hayden. I was going to, like, listen in, maybe make a few cameos. Is it cameo or cameo? Yeah, cameo. Cameo. I was maybe going to do that because I'm a big fan of H. 
and he's so funny and plenty to talk about. Like that, the kid was, you know, he was getting a lot of screen time this weekend. Uh, chirp, chirp, chirp. Love it. Um, oh, we got to talk about that. Yeah, you got to talk the next about topic. that. It's a shame not to have Hayden on. But. I know. But anyways, so sorry, guys. We don't have Hayden on. Let's talk about this one a little bit. So Ann and I, our favorite player to watch probably is Matt Wright. And at least he's top three for the both of us. And we played against him. My team, the fives, with Hayden Patrick Quinn. Hayden is 17 years <laughs> old. And Hayden doesn't look like he's 17. Hayden looks like he's 13 at the oldest. This is a fun fact. Hayden was playing on the court with, um, I think it was Anna Lee or something. And one of my friends who doesn't play pickleball or watch pickleball had come by to watch. And he said, wait, who is that little kid? That kid's got game. I was like, oh, that's Hayden. Hayden's the number one 12 year old in the world. And my friend was like, that guy's a beast for 12. Like just totally bought it. Never even questioned Hayden not being 12. So that just gives you an idea of what Hayden looks like. Matt Wright, on the other hand, is 47 years old, bald, lawyer, looks about 47 and a half. And we're playing men's doubles against them, and things are getting chirpy. Hayden, hit a, he'll hit a winner, and he'll be like, oh, nice try, buddy, or something like that. And then Matt will say something like, "Getting going back and forth, things are getting a little bit heated. And at the paddle tap, so they ended up winning. And... Matt Wright, I don't know if we can even release this. We'll, it, you know, we'll say we'll we'll censor it. They win the they win the match, and then right before the paddle tap, Matt looks at Hayden. And he's like, "Get the f out!" And Hayden is just like, you know, whatever. He's a little kid. And then the next match happens, and Hayden hits like uh Hayden's playing against Matt in mixed, and Hayden hits a winner, like halfway through the match, and he's like, "F you." As he hits the winner and he didn't say F and neither did Matt. And then he gets a blue card. And I think Hayden was the only player that got a blue card at this event. A blue card is, uh, you know, you did something bad, right? What is the blue card again? You were just a bad boy. You were a bad boy. Yeah. So that happened. And um, there was a lot of expletives between the two players. Our team was so mad at Matt. Uh, I won't say any names, but the, play the players on our team, people watching were like, oh, Matt is so mean. He's 47 and he's like being so mean to this little kid. It's like, okay, Hayden's almost 18. He can handle. It's just because Hayden looks like he's 12. He's not a baby. But what are your thoughts on the Matt Wright, Hayden Patrick Quinn beef? I mean, I wasn't there. Uh, I mean, I was watching, but you couldn't hear it if you were courtside. I I think it's funny, you know? I mean, I don't know if Hayden took it really personally. You know Matt didn't, and uh, I think Hayden kind of asked for it. And he plays better when it's going on, right? Like, him and Julian are going back and forth all match. Like, Hayden once, like, we were playing Hayden at a PPA, and we won the first game. Hayden walks up, and he goes, uh, and I don't chirp at all, but I just he just says, like, hey, Anna, don't get tied on your thirds. Like, he's uh, <laughs> he, he's always trying to instigate, and uh, I think it's I think it's great. I think it's funny. Yeah, I don't think he took it personally. I don't think either of them took it personally. Uh, the only people that took it personally were probably the Waters and, and Leia on our side of the bench who were just not happy with Matt at all. But it is what it is. What can you do? Um, so we have, speaking of Matt Wright, next tournament coming up is Denver PPA. So we're going to play mixed with each other. I'm playing men's doubles with the one and only Matt Wright. This is going to be electric. We're going to be loud. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Who are you playing with in women's? AL. Oh, wow. Okay, so we'll make sure to book our flight for Sunday night. Uh, no, I want to fly out like on Monday because, because as a late birthday present for you, I know how badly you want to go to the Taylor Swift Eras Tour. It's on Sunday in Denver. Happy birthday. Um, okay. We're going to edit that out, guys. Um, so. You have uh, to go with me. Yeah. 
Okay, we'll do something James fun. James and I were first talking, everyone. He told me that he loved Taylor Swift. and I do. I just wouldn't I go think, to a concert. I think I got, I, I think either you asked me like my 10 favorite songs and I sent you like this list and you were like, I love all, of, like, I love all of those. That's not, that's not even close to what happened, guys. This is getting absurd. This is getting absurd. I enjoy the occasional. And he doesn't want to go to the concert with me. I like Taylor Swift sometimes. But I'm not, favorite, I'm not going to a concert. I'm not going to a Taylor Swift plays concert. The most right now is um, Miss Americana by Taylor Swift. He's playing that song. song. That's a great oh, song. Wow. He's playing that song a lot in the car. It's a great song, but I'm not going to go to a concert with a bunch of 13-year-old girls. They don't matter. I'm 23. I'm so. not going. I'm not going to a Taylor Swift concert. So you're just going to have me go alone? Yeah, you can go alone. And I'll I'll hang out with Matt Wright. This um is literally tragic. <laughs> okay, so what else? Is there anything yeah, else we have to talk I don't about? Want to go alone. MLP related stuff. Um I don't want to go alone. Who do you think goes higher? You or Dylan Frazier? Um I think probably me after this last event and BLQK not doing too well, but I hope. Because I think, so basically everyone, I don't know how nerdy people are who listen to your podcast. I think my podcast, the people are really nerdy. Um, we heard a lot of the owners expecting a 9-3 split men to women, which is insane, more than I was expecting. And if that happens, I think that for like the women, which would presumably be like Anna Lee and then most likely myself and Catherine, it could be different, of course. But if that's the case, it's not like, me and Catherine are just going to like take over and, you know, carry an entire team. Exactly. So say I went like sixth overall and there were nine men taken. Then I have like the, the seventh pick of the second round. There's going to be no left side men left at that point. So I feel like if I go first round, I want to go so late if it's actually going to be a nine, three split. Yeah. But uh, I think it's very possible. I do go before Dylan and, and it'll be really tough to like build a team from there. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, we'll Whereas see. Whereas, like, because... James, it's like if James goes, like, sixth overall, like, he's already the left side guy for his team. He can just draft, like, yeah. Like most women are, like, pretty comparable in level. It's not like I'm, like, head and shoulders better than any of, like, the women that were drafted after me, like, this year. So, yeah. So, it's, like, it's really, it's going to be tough, I think. It depends. It depends on a lot of things. Um, but what if thing... I go like 11 or 12? I feel like I would be in a great spot For if sure. it's a five, three split regardless, because then I can get like the 10th or 11th males off the board. Whereas if I go like sixth overall, then it's like you're stuck with potentially like the 15th or 16th male off the board is the number one male on your team, which is tough. For sure. And I got to mention this. Um, one thing that's really helped my game um, recently has been this this. So I usually use these normal towels, right? These towels, you go to Lifetime PPA towel. You're like, what are you doing? This is a regular Lifetime towel. And then at MLP, me and Hayden, we won eight straight men's matches. We played it eight straight. We won all of them. And that was mostly Hayden, right? But I noticed, I went back and I watched the tape. I was like, what was the common denominator between all of these men's matches that we won? And then the, th the three that we lost, what was the difference? For those eight men's matches that I won, I was having, on the sideline, I was going back to my pickle and social towel. And I was like, oh, this is a huge change. And then the three that we lost, I forgot the towel. So I just got to shout out Joe. Shout out pickle and social. They make the best towels in the game. And it's a big part of my game now. This towel is like unbelievable. And the listeners at home, they have to try it. Um, speaking of that, we have camps coming. Got the Houston camp going to it today. Era pickleball. We'll see if this even gets released in time for that, but we're excited. Clinics and camps, in my opinion, are probably probably almost as fun as tournaments because it's I get to let Anna run the show, just watch her tell everybody all these tips and tricks, and I just sit back and I make a joke or two, and then I collect a check. That's my best experience at these camps. Um, so we're going to wind down the show do you have any questions for me before I go into the other room, which is where you happen to be located? Are you going to come snuggle me? 
we're editing that out. Okay. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye. <laughs>